In the previous video, we looked at initially implementing code for Black Shoals. So this is uh, Black Shoals. So it's VBA um, code setting out a basic uh, Black Shoals calculation. Then we subsequently looked at how would we infer the value of implied volatility. If we knew the option price and we used that uh, what if analysis and go seek. And in this video, we're looking at what if we were to do the same, work out implied volatility. So implementing uh, this formula here using a bisection T, what if we were to work out the same, but we had to do it uh, on a larger scale? And uh, what's involved uh, in the code? So initially, just to explain the code here, we we could think of well one way of looking at this is to um I could use a diagram I suppose so if I took this section again copy and we paste in and we run let's say we run the calculation again okay so we're getting the same output more or less and what if we I mean one of the things we could see here is if we increase the value of the volatility, so 0 0.21, 0 0.25, so on, and pull that up, that as the value of the volatility increases, the value of the option increases as well. So there's a, if you like, a monotonic relationship that as one rises, the other, so if we increase volatility, the value of the option increases. If we reduce the volatility, the value of the option. Okay, and that then implies if we were searching, if we were trying to back out, if, if we knew the value of the option, we could ch keep changing. The volatility until we arrived at the right option price. So, if let's say the option price was 14, somewhere between uh, let's, uh, let's say 14.02 was the value of the option. Well, we could keep changing. There would be higher, a lower value, and a higher value, and we could keep changing these until we arrived at the. 14 zero. So we could say, obviously, the the value of if the price of the option is 14.02, the value of sigma must be between 0 0.33 and 0 0.29. And if we tweak this up a little bit, 0 0.2, let's change it to 0 0.3, and this to 0 0.31, we're getting values closer and closer to the 14.02 so if, okay we go down a little bit 0 0.29 0 0.291 0. 295 okay we've gone over so we can see that maybe we should go down 0 0.292 uh, and eventually we, we arrive at by continuing to guess here we get closer and closer, right? Two nine two four two two nine two nine four three, and so you can see how we're approaching by incrementally adjusting, by having a lower and upper bounds, 
and tweaking between the two we can converge okay obviously this is not a completely satisfactory way of approach trying to discover uh, the value of implied volatility in a kind of practical sense so that would suggest we would should try to automate that tweaking or guessing and a number of techniques are available available but the technique we use here is bisection mainly because the volatility the value of the option is monotonic but the value of the volatility so if we take the function we just initially start with the function itself so we'll just copy escape and paste in and if you think of Okay, how the data is presented. So if, you, if you're calculating implied volatility, what you have is you have the stock price, you have the exercise, you have the risk free rate, you have the dividend yield, you have the time period, C7 is the maturity. What's C9? C9 is the value, not the Black Scholes value necessarily, it is the value at which the option trades in the market. So we could call it the call market price. Right? We could call it the call market price. In other words, we observe the value of the call in the market. What we're trying to infer is the value of volatility consistent. Okay, so we read in what is, uh, we have a H and an L, and the H and the L just denote upper and lower values of volatility. And then we say, look, while the value of these variables differ of an order of magnitude greater than 0 0.0001, I'd keep running through the same exercise. And the exercise is value the option where you initially take the average so again you're calling up if bsc and we're calling up this function here so if we go back into the developer tab this function here is saying look keep making the calculation do while and we're referencing back to black shows the function written directly above and we're saying perform black shows on the parameter values are set out and take these initial seed values of h now what's this h and l h and l divided by two is essentially the upper and lower volatilities seed values and we're taking an average and we're saying if this black shows value so the black shows value exceeds the market value then the the guess is too high and we should lower the upper guess the, the seed value for the upper volatility and so the new h that will run back through the loop the new h if we started with five and a value of zero the new h for the next loop will be five plus zero divided by two is 2.5 so it runs through the same exercise again, but the new value going in will be 2.5 plus 0 divided by 2. And if that's too high again, you do the same with H, you divide it by 2. But if it's too low, if it weren't too high, then obviously it would be lower. The black Scholes value would be lower. And then we say, okay, raise the lower value. So keep the old H but now raise L. So instead of doing this, if the black shows value is less than the call price, we don't use this, the new seed value, seed values will now be estimated or drawn from a new L, which is now the average of the H and L the previous H&L, which has the effect of raising L. 
And so in the new loop, as we go through, we're getting a tightening or a convergence between the H and the L as the loop keeps performing this task. And when we find that H and L are not very different, in other words, when H and L, the difference between the two is less than this value here, then we come out of the loop and then we estimate the implied volatility by taking the last, the last H and L and dividing it averaging it or dividing by two and then that produces our implied volatility so if we go back to again we could so if we pull across and change the value here to 0 0.2943 value of the option is of the order here of uh, 14.01 um, what if the option price is 14.01? The other parameter values are given, let's say we don't know this value, using this function, the, the, set up using the bisection technique. That's pulled across. We find it pulls out or it backs out 29.43. So basically when we pull that across, we're essentially implement implementing this piece of code here and it runs through a number of times the loop and it performs that exercise again h equal to 5 is equivalent to 500 percent volatility and l equal to 0 is the initial seed value of volatility of 0 percent and those values keep closing on it closing in on each other until we arrive at a black shoals value a black shows estimation which converges with the price we observe, call market price that we observe from the market. Implied volatility is a useful technique. It's useful, well, it's a useful concept because it's so broadly uh, referenced in terms of traders and how they trade. And uh, sometimes the views express that implied volatility is a kind of a benchmark uh, by which traders compare the relative priciness or expensiveness of of options and if when you look at options with different cash prices we don't necessarily know what uh, those cash values mean but when we express in terms of their implied volatility it's clear how an option is being priced the higher the volatility the higher the relative priciness or the expensiveness of the option is. Likewise, the lower the value of the implied volatility, so if, if we, if the value of the volatility reduces to 1%, then the value of the option uh, continues to fall. Okay, uh, until you get to re relatively close to intrinsic value uh, discounted, the discounted uh, intrinsic value of the auction.